Hello, I'm Melanie Fales, Executive Director of the Boise Art Museum. I'd like to thank you for joining us for this educational program presented in conjunction with the exhibition, The World Stage, Contemporary Art from the Collections of Jordan D. Schnitzer and His Family Foundation. This exhibition, organized by the Nevada Museum of Art in Reno, opened at the Boise Art Museum on March 6th and is on display through July 11, 2021. Its presentation at BAM was made possible thanks to the sponsorship of Bev and George Herod. This series of virtual talks is supported in part by a grant from the Idaho Humanities Council, a state-based program of the National Endowment for the Humanities. Following this video, please help BAM continue to present programs like this in the future by completing a short evaluation at boiseartmuseum.org talks. The world stage features 90 contemporary artworks by 37 renowned American artists. It presents the opportunity for BAM to expand cultural understanding and to explore important ideas related to human and civil rights through the experience of engaging with the artwork. In this virtual talk, we'll be examining the function of museums as public squares. Museums around the country have become spaces where artists, scholars, and community come together in dialogue around civic and social issues. The artworks in the world stage have particular relevance to the current conditions of our world and the major cultural shift in our nation prompted by the Black Lives Matter movement. So what are the roles of museums in society during times like this? How do art and social justice tie together? How can museums help create bridges to cross divides between people with diverse life experiences and points of view? An exhibition of the size and scope of the world stage presents multiple entry points for members of our community to learn about the range of artists' perspectives and to make connections between artwork in the exhibition and larger societal issues and events. To begin to dig into these questions, I have the pleasure of welcoming four special guests to our program. Mildred Howard and Hung Liu are internationally recognized artists. Joanne Northrup is the Curatorial Director and Curator of Contemporary Art at the Nevada Museum of Art, and Jordan Schnitzer is a lifelong collector of artwork by today's most important contemporary artists. The presenters' full bios are on our website for you to read more about them. Joanne, I'd like to start with you. Artists have long worked to unearth societal inequities. Can you point to a few artists in the World Stage exhibition you consider to be ahead of their time in creating art as social justice? A lot of the artists included in the World Stage um, are very concerned with social justice. And perhaps one of the most important um, black American artists working in this vein is Jacob Lawrence. Um, and what I wanted to do instead of showing um, something that you would expect from this artist who is so widely renowned, I wanted to show his daily life. And so I selected a work that didn't show, you know, the Great Migration or something like that. I um, I wanted to select a work that showed his daily life. And so I chose a piece that depicts the artist in his studio because um, African American life is not just about um, civil rights protests. It's, all, it's also about just day-to-day -day existence and the work of an artist and um, the living space and daily life of the artist. Mildred, my next question is for you. In normal times, museums are places for the public to gather and have important conversations prompted by the artwork on view. If you were able to travel to Boise and attend the exhibition at BAM, you'd certainly overhear visitors responding to your artwork. What would be the most meaningful comment you could hear? My work is often talking about things that are overlooked are somewhat not talked about in the media. My inspiration comes from my surroundings, from what's happening in the news, 
from music, from reading. It's mostly about life and how I see things. I can't tell people what to take away or what they should be thinking because that's up to them. But I would hope that they would look at the work deeply and begin to question how the world is viewed from multiple perspectives. That's one of the things that I'd like for them to be have a sense of curiosity and be able to question. The other thing is, is that we're in such a turmoil now that I'm hoping that some of these people will help to encourage those who speak out against all the injustices that are happening right now and to remember that you have a voice. You have a voice and you can express that voice in so many ways. So this is one of the things that I'm hoping that would happen as a result of this exhibition. I mean, that's a lot. I'm an artist, it's not like I'm curing cancer. But I would hope that they begin to see that, okay, I can do this. I'll ask you the same question, Joanne. If you were able to overhear our guests talking about the exhibition, what would be the most meaningful comments for you? If I were a fly on the wall um, in the galleries uh, at the Boise Art Museum, while the world stage is on view, um, what would make me really happy would be if people seemed enlivened and um, if joy were conveyed to the people in the galleries. I think of an artist like Willie Cole, whose work is deeply meaningful. Um, he's an artist who was raised by two very strong women, his grandmother and his mother. And um, every piece that he does is an homage to his, um, the women that raised him. He uses a, sort of a, a, an iron print as if it's singed into the surface of the paper. Um, and he uses this because his grandmother and mother took in laundry to support their family. And so they both look like sort of a, an icon um, that you might see, a religious icon. And then you can also see them as a flower. So he uses this iron print in many ways. And you could also imagine that the large print is like an aerial view of a slave ship um, with all the human cargo packed below. So I think that his work is such a great indication of what I hope people will take with them because I, I hope that they'll be excited by the color and the formal beauty of the work and then they'll think about it because there's content um, so it's both deeply meaningful and it's joyful. Joanne, can you share an experience you had in an art museum that encouraged you to think differently and has impacted the way you organize exhibitions? One of my favorite art museums in the entire world is based in Paris and it's called Le Musée de la Chasse et de la Nature the Museum of Hunting and Nature. And that might appeal to a lot of uh, Boise visitors. Uh, look it up, it's a great place. So in this art museum, it's a traditional, beautiful French hotel particulier, a, a private home. And it's got beautiful antiques throughout and then taxidermy um, integrated in very surprising ways. Um, surprising in beautiful ways. And I just love that juxtaposition. So that really has influenced the way that I curate exhibitions. I do not like to put same with same. I like juxtapositions. I like to put something unusual um, next to something common and really mix it up. As if you were organizing a really fun party. You know, you want to bring in the older, wise, you know, people, you want to have young people with lots of energy, you want people from different cultural backgrounds um, to create a great mix um, that engages. So that's what I think about when I'm organizing exhibitions. 
I love that you mentioned drawing in and appealing to all different kinds of people. In my time at BAM, I've sought ways to open our doors and welcome more people from all backgrounds and with a wide variety of interests. As an institution, we work very hard to dispel the perception that art museums are only for the few. I truly believe that art and art museums are for everyone. How do you think art museums can create a more inclusive and engaging environment? I'm always thinking about how the art museum can make visitors feel welcome, regardless of their level of engagement with art, and particularly contemporary art. Um, contemporary art can be um, an arcane language for some visitors uh, who might be more comfortable with more familiar uh, traditional forms of art. So I always like to incorporate some aspect of pop culture, and that's why the world stage has some pop culture figures in it. Um, the uh, Reigning Queens by Andy Warhol, um, the Micheline Thomas print um, that's titled Where Ends Meet with a, a rhinestone embedded uh, portrait of Oprah Winfrey, and of course, Beyonce, Queen Bee. Um, so, Particularly young people that are coming to see the exhibition will see something that they know and they will instantly feel at ease. You know, I think about the public square as a place where people can have their voices heard on a variety of topics of importance at the time. I think of the speaker standing on the platform in a public place like the middle of a park. For visual artists, the public square, the place where they can communicate their messages through their visual means, is an art museum. Jordan, my next question is for you. By sharing artwork in the world stage with the Boise Art Museum, you make it possible for BAM as an educational institution to focus on the artwork to spark meaningful conversations in the community. Can you talk about the ways museums serve as forums like public squares and also the ways in which artists reflect the themes of our time? I remember fondly our last exhibition at the Boise Art Museum, Kara Walker, and the fabulous time we had meeting so many of you and the symposium we put on then about black-white relationships and how we needed to understand and talk to each other and, and, and get rid of the white supremacy and all the issues that are still, unfortunately, uh, uh, consuming us in this, this country. Um, the current show, The World Stage, is phenomenal and I think has just as much impact as the last exhibition there. It was curated brilliantly and has some of the most important artists of our time. These artists are artists that have come from various ethnic and cultural backgrounds and they do what all artists are supposed to do. They paint and print digital, whatever the format is, of images that basically seduce us to come look at their work. And once we look at their work, the work grabs us and forces us to think about the themes that that artist is speaking to us about. Artists are always chroniclers of our time. They're the ones forcing us to deal with issues in our society. I think 20 and 30 and 40 years from now, historians and Sociologists will look back and say uh, 2000 to 2030 was a time when many ethnic groups came into their own, decades too late, but came into their own culturally and politically. So if we think about artists reflecting themes of our time, that's why this show is so appropriate. Because it's reflecting these things that are grabbing this country and shaking it up and having us look at how we treat each other, how we talk to each other, okay, what we think about each other. Okay. Now those themes are no different than ever before. It's just that those words now are being spoken to a broader audience than ever before. As our country becomes more multiracial, multicultural, multicolor, it's the wonderful melting pot that's made the United States the beacon in the world of freedom. Freedom of thought, freedom of religion, freedom of where you live, what you think, what you say. 
And this exhibition world stage reflects all those themes. You could throw a dart at any one of these images. Don't throw the dart at the work on the walls. The saying is you can pick any one of the works on the walls. And if that one work were in the whole exhibition space of the Boise Art Museum, that work alone would foster contemplation by everyone who saw it. We're lucky that this exhibition has dozens of works. Each one is powerful enough to write a thesis on about the thoughts that are being expressed by the artist in creating that work. Hung, the world stage features American artists and their perspectives on civic and social issues of our time in this country, providing a type of public square or public stage. As an American artist, do you consider yourself part of the world stage, part of an international art world, or the U.S. or local art world? And what recent changes have you noticed in the art world? I think in order to be international, you have to be very local. You have to focus on something concrete, not just the, the world. The world could be abstract, what is the world? So I think you have to be connected locally. And uh, uh, for myself, uh, I'm here based, if you want to say, based in Oakland, California. Um, and uh, I have my studio here. I have my family here. Uh, my husband and myself moved here, you know, uh, 20, uh, no, 30 years ago, actually, 30 years ago. So uh, a lot of, you know, uh, each day, you know, it, it, your life, you know, really formed by, by you know, every moment in your, in your you, you live through. So I, I think a uh, world stage uh, is both very big but very concrete to me. I, I think the world, uh, if you want to see there's art world, it could be so abstract, but also there's a, a very concrete, your art community. So you can say world art or art world, you know, you switch words, pretty interesting. So, so I think uh, to me, uh, uh, being in this show, uh, you really, you, you on the stage with other really great artists, you know, it's also the world has, art world has changed a lot. And I saw more women in, in, on the stage. Or oh, oh, you can see artists of color from different ethnic background, from uh, different cultural background, all on the same stage. In China, uh, we have a, uh, very interesting, uh, like a couplet phrases, uh, a phrase for, uh, uh, I remember, you know, de derived from a, a, some Chinese traditional opera. Uh, they, they, on the stage, they, they said, Wu Tai Xiao Shi Jie, Shi Jie Da Wu Tai, meaning the stage is a little world. The world is a big stage, so I think it's very interesting who will be on the stage performing, who are leading, it's very important. I'm glad I'm in the show with uh, some really great artists in our time, and on the stage, we perform to show the world that uh, what, you know, uh, maybe bring them update what, what the world should be like or what we have, gone, uh, we have gone through to share with the world. Jordan, going back to you, what do you believe are the greatest challenges art museums face in the near future? I remember reading about when my mother was a, a young woman and Frank Sinatra was the biggest singer. And all the parent groups said, oh gosh, who's this young punk? And then Elvis Presley came along. Oh my gosh, with those bump and grinds. Uh, he was uh, censored because he was d moving too sexy. Oh my gosh, if those censors were around today, what would they think? 
my point is that society changes and people's expectation of entertainment and how they use their time changes. So with the advent of the smartphone and computers, we all know we have at our fingertips more information than any generation in history has ever had. Whether that's good or bad, that's, we're way past that question. Okay? So a couple issues that are facing all cultural institutions is the attention span, especially of younger people, that seem to have their smartphones glued to their hands, their attention span is like a gnat. They expect to be entertained all the time. They're in contact with each other, Instagram, Facebook, Twittering, and whatever. How is that a challenge to museums? It is no different than ballet, opera, symphony, so forth. I think museums are lucky in that they are ageless and timeless. And while you can see on a screen Mona Lisa, while you can see an Andy Warhol, while you can see any artist you want, there is something that happens that's more tangible and magic when you actually see an original work. The other thing about art museums is you can go at your own pace, you're not stuck in a chair, you like some things, you don't like some other things. So museums will survive the test of time. So I think museums uh, have a bright, bright future, but they not, must not rest on their laurels like any other business, profit or non-profit. Okay. There's always a changing marketplace, and museums are competing with limited time people have to whether it's fishing, sports, whatever they, however they spend their free time. So they've got to be innovative with their exhibitions, do exhibitions like this that speak to everyone, and uh, continue to, like every, uh, every business, uh, run a bit scared of making sure they're doing the right thing for their audience. Joanne, can you add your thoughts? What are the greatest challenges art museums face in the near future? Well, the most obvious uh, challenge that art museums face in 2021 is bringing audiences back after COVID, ensuring people that they can have a safe experience in the galleries. And you know, that one-on-one -on -one experience with art is so meaningful. After all of us have been glued to our screens, you know, Zooming hours a day and college students having to take their courses um, online, I think the individual experience of an authentic artwork in person, up close and personal, um, that is the greatest gift that we can bring to people after the challenges of 2020 and COVID-19. Artists reflect what is happening in our society today and I think art museums will continue to be challenged to share artists' multiple perspectives, including views that may not be popular with everyone, so that art museums continue to build understanding, compassion, and empathy for one another, along with respect for differing viewpoints. Art museums will have to be brave and help people know that they do not have to agree with the artists' perspectives to still be able to participate in the visual conversation and to learn. I have one final question for you both, Jordan and Joanne. What would you like to see as the future role of museums? I think it's fair to say that all of us see a country that's more divided than at any time in our lives. Now, having different political views, that is healthy and constructive. Uh, at the same time, we've allowed a rhetoric to be accepted of attacking people personally, which in my opinion is not acceptable. You can argue with their views, but we respect whatever position they're, whether it's left, right, center, whatever. Everyone's entitled to their views about everything, what they wear, who they vote for, what they eat, what they drive, and so forth. I think it's incumbent on this country and every one of us to figure out how we can get back to where we respect each other okay, and respect each other's differences. We're always prone as human beings to want to go to extremes. And there seems to be 
also something in many of us that somehow it seems that if you put someone else down in some warped way, you somehow think that you're better or whatever. And that's not the way this country was built. This country was built by our all coming together, various ethnic, socioeconomic, religious, gender, uh, coming together collectively with a vision to build our communities, build our states, build our country into the best it could be. Art museums play a critical role because art museums may have political work, but art museums in and of themselves are not political creatures. They're egalitarian. They're houses of worshiping art of all forms by all different kinds of artists, irrespective of their gender, their history. So art museums can help be a major force in helping us come back together as a country. If I could wave my magic wand, I would love for art museums to function as places for dialogue between people who may or may not have similar opinions. I'd like to see art museums as places where debate could occur in a polite, respectful manner, where we could exchange um, ideas and, you know, share differences in, in a respectful way. Whether it is to engage with new ideas, to imagine and enjoy beauty, to find perspective, or to relax, I hope art museums will be places where everyone can see themselves. Thank you, Mildred Howard, Hung Lu, Joanne Northrup, and Jordan Schnitzer for coming together to create our virtual public square with the world stage. Thank you all for watching. We have one more virtual talk coming soon. Please help us continue to present programs like this in the future by completing a short evaluation at boiseartmuseum.org talks. Thank you.